a soul-searching question, what is it about me? Many of us are trying to move forward, but we are going nowhere fast. Far too many of us are stuck in our past, a past that has held us captive and will continue to unless we deal with it. Pain, hidden so deep within our subconscious and unconscious minds, hurt that needs to be resurrected, resolved, then put to rest. If we don't deal with our past, it will certainly deal with us. If we remain as is, we will never experience freedom, we will never abound. Please lay hold of this truth, even though we may be unaware of the events and the extent to which our past has traumatized us. Know this, these events are wreaking havoc in our lives and are preventing us from experiencing the fullness of life. Because I am ignorant of a truth, it does not mean that the principles of those truths aren't working for me or against me. We are saved, but failure seems to be our fortune, on our way to heaven, but heavily burdened. Working for God, but not walking with God. Frustration lingers and fear paralyzes us. Disappointments have made their abode in our hearts. Depression has disabled us. We have adopted the ways of the world, for we believe their ideals. We are beautifully adorned on the outside, but our inner man is wasted, weak, weary, worn, and worried. Many of us are accomplished professionally, financially, and academically yet purpose has eluded us and like the children of Israel we are walking aimlessly through life we are in motion but we are not making progress if part or all of the above is your reality, we must muster the boldness to ask unnerving questions, questions that will strip us bare and expose our naked, shattered souls. One such question is, what is it about me? What is it about me that binds me to unhealthy people? What is it about me why I can't hold a job? What is it about me that causes me to repel quality people and relationships? What what is it about me that attracts broken men? What is it about me why I am passed over for great opportunities? What is it about me why I can't believe in myself? What is it about me that causes me to lust after things that are harmful? What is it about me why I seek approval from wrong people? What is it about me that causes me to fear success? What is it about me that causes me to rebel against God's word? What is it about me that causes me to begin projects but never complete them? What is it about me that partners with procrastination? What is it about me every time I take two steps forward, it seems I also take three steps backwards? What is it about me that causes me to pretend to be who I'm not and to possess what I don't? What is it about me that has brought about a divorce between me and monies? What is it about me that causes me to love the things of the world? World, but scarcely desire God's word. What is it about me? I keep making the same mistakes, yet I fail to learn from them. What is it about me that gravitates to people who will tell me what I want to hear and not what I need to? What is it about me that makes me unteachable? What is it about me that desires to control and dominate others? What is it about me that causes me to use food, sex, drugs, and alcohol as mechanisms of escape? What is it about me that is fearful of seeking help? What is it about me that resists changes? What is it about me that has caused me to accept stagnation and label it as stability? What is it about me that caused me to causes me to be intimidated by the strength of others? What is it about me that impedes me from saying I am sorry?
What is it about me that is manipulative and conniving? What is it about me why I have to have the last say and the desire to prove that others are wrong and I am right? What is it about me that lavishes in contention? What is it about me that drives me to gossip and belittle others? What is it about me that, that despises seeing others prosper? What is it about me that makes me untrustworthy? What is it about me that always wants to be in the spotlight? What is it about me that hinders me from seeing and acknowledging who I truly am? Ask yourself with a loud cry of inquiry, what is it about me? While I might not have identified your what is it about me, we all have at least one. Some of us have been betrayed, so we no longer trust and we have become embittered. Infidelity, lies, incest, rape, rejection, and abandonment, deaths of significant others, hardships, sicknesses you might have endured, divorce, physical and sexual abuse, shattered dreams and homes, deception, and generational misfortunes might have left you disillusioned and disenchanted. It might have been etched in your mind that you will never amount to anything, so constantly you have to prove to yourself and others that you are significant. Some of you may be experiencing loneliness because you have isolated yourselves and have encaged your life in a cocoon, afraid to expose the real you for fear of condemnation and further rejection. Some of you might altogether have lost hope in yourself and God. You and I must honestly ask ourselves, what is it about me? Here are a few recommendations to deal with your what is it about me. There's an old adage to thine own self be true. The Bible says in Psalm 1825, to the faithful you show yourself faithful, to those with integrity you show integrity, to the pure you show yourself pure, but to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. Go to God with integrity and purity of heart and ask him to expose your heart, hurts, pains, wounds, and trauma, everything that is holding you hostage. Ask him to help you by his spirit to deal with them. You must work. You need to do what is necessary to be emancipated from mental enslavement, for indeed the mind is the battleground. You, if you need therapy, find a trained therapist with a bibliocentric worldview, one who will guide you in the ways of God. Lay hold of good books that deal with the subject with which you are working through. Set aside quality time for prayer, fasting, and meditation in the Word. Connect with a wise, mature person with whom you can converse and confide. Someone who has your best interests at heart. One who will be a sounding board, if only a listening ear. A person who will hold you accountable. Pen your thoughts and chart your progress and setbacks. Identify triggers and establish appropriate interventions. Learn to release. Forgive those who have wronged you. Also, forgive yourself. The greatest release from mental and emotional imprisonment is to be first rescued. Stay the course. Do not give in. Do not give up. Do not retreat. Believe you are not alone and that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. When it is all said and done, you will emerge from your cocoon, a beautiful, radiant butterfly, one who will perch on flowers, extract its nectar and fragrance, nectar that you can use to add sweetness to the lives of others and a fragrance to perfume their path. I love you. I am committed to your success. Go forth and thrive.